We're live. It's like that. Just click a button. There's really no difference, but now we're live. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Aaron Roy from Teachable. Today, we have a very fun workshop with Tila Cunningham and some of her students, Michelle and Riley. Um, we're going to get started in just a few moments. For those that have joined us before, we usually take the first two to three minutes just to make sure everything works uh, before we really, really get into this workshop today. So, there's a bit of a delay, so it takes me a few seconds to see folks' comments. What I would love before I hand this over to Tila is let us know where you're joining from. Let us know, you know, like what you're excited to see today, and just say hello. Uh, actually, most importantly, let us know you could see us and hear us. That would be great. Um, that way, I actually know things are working. Um, so I'm going to be keeping an eye on the comments right now. Um, like I said, this is Aaron Roy from Teachable. I'm joining from Brooklyn today. Um, Tila, Michelle, Riley, why don't y'all say hi? Let's make sure everything works on your side. Hey everyone. Hello. Hi. Happy Friday. Happy Friday indeed. <laughs> um, I'm still not seeing comments, but oh, there we go. That's what I'm waiting for. Comments starting to roll in. All right, cool, cool, cool. Thank you so much, Brooke from Colorado, letting us know loud and clear. We got, just so you guys know, we have a, looks like a quite an international audience today. We have folks joining us from Pennsylvania, Colorado, Kansas City. We got Germany, Kansas Orlando, City. Pennsylvania. Very, very cool. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, like I said, we're going to get started in just a few moments. Um, the format of today's workshop, just a reminder, um, you know, Tila is going to be, be leading this workshop, but she has two of her stu students joining with her with us today. And we're going to be able to see their progress as well. Uh, if you have questions for Tila today, there's going to be time at the end for, for some Q&A. Um, but if you have a question during the workshop, uh, you know, something in particular, feel free to put it in the chat. Uh, you know, I'll be watching that. And if it's something urgent, I'll bring it to her attention. If it's something that could wait to the end, we'll, we'll try to do it then. Other than that, you know, Tila, I think some of these folks know you really well, but perhaps some don't. With that, you know, why don't you share a little bit about yourself, what we'll be covering today. And like I said, I'm going to pop backstage, just say my name and I'll reappear. Sure. So, hey, everyone, I am Tila. I am mostly the voice behind every hyphen Tuesday.com. Uh, I have a YouTube channel where I post a brand new tutorial every single Tuesday. And I have a huge focus on Procreate. So I do a lot of hand lettering and illustration. So in today's tutorial, uh, we're going to be painting some watercolor cherry blossoms directly in Procreate. So Aaron, they can see the screen, right? The, the full artwork. I think that's a great technical question because I see it perfectly, but everyone, you should see beautiful oh, floral artwork. Yeah, just let us know. No one's actually commented on that, but you should see a giant screen in the middle that, that you'll be following along with today. Um, please let us know in the comments, and if not, we'll get that fixed. But yes, it looks good to me. Okay, cool. So that is the project. This is what we're going to be creating together in real time, start to finish. I am using my watercolor illustration brush set for Procreate and Aaron posted a link. Hopefully everyone saw that link of where to get it. Um, I'll also share that link right here really quick so you guys can have it here on screen too because it's super important. Um, for creating this. If you wanna follow along exactly, this is the brush set that I'm using and we use a bunch of brushes out of this brush set so we can get all that really pretty detail. So that is the link to the brush set. Uh, and then we need to go and grab the source photo that we're going to be working from, which is this pretty source photo, even though it's a little blurry, totally fine. We're gonna roll with it. We're just using it to define all of our shapes and then we're going to bring in color from the photo itself. So we're actually not even using a, a color palette for this one. Usually I always provide color swatches, but we're going to be pulling it directly from the photo because I just love the different colors in this photo. So I'm going to start by showing you where to grab the photo. Hopefully you've got the brush set ready to go. So we're going to jump into Pinterest. I have the Pinterest app on my iPad, um, but you can also grab the link that Aaron provided too. We're at my, floor, my flower reference photos board and I've got just a bunch of photos I I always keep a huge collection of different flower photos here that I love to draw. So you can use the same techniques that you learn in this video for really any flowers on this board if you want to take a stab at them as well using the same methods. So it's down just a little ways. This is the photo. So you're just going to tap on it and then hit the little three dots up at the top in the top right. And then you wanna hit download image. And when you download the image, it's going to save it to your camera roll. So now we're going to hop back into Procreate. We'll bring in the source photo and then we can start working from there. So we're all set in Procreate or we're all set in Pinterest now. So I'm going to head back 
to procreate and you want to create a brand new file i work um my all of my files if you followed my tutorials before you know i work at 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi I work in the display P3 color profile, but if you're on an older iPad and that doesn't show up, then the default sRGB color profile is totally fine. Um, so create a brand new canvas that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels. And then what you're going to do to bring in this photo exactly as I have it right here, you're just going to hit the wrench once you have your canvas created and then hit insert a photo and that will bring you to your camera roll and then you can just grab that photo you'll see it it'll be the first one listed and then it'll just pop right in and you can scale it up i scaled this one up just slightly so i could fill the entirety of my canvas as i'm working um, but you can use any scale that you would like this one where we can really get in and um, get into those really nice smaller details here so this is the scale that i'm working at and once you have this then we are ready to go so i'm going to flip my screen around so you can watch my hand move over the iPad so you can get both screens. Uh, so it'll be hopefully a really fun and enjoyable experience to see my hand moving on one screen and then everything in crisp, super crisp detail on the other screen. So I'm gonna switch myself around right now. Okay, hopefully you can see my hand moving. Yep. All right. <laughs> So the first thing we need to do is create a sketch layer. And this is kind of, I would classify as a little bit intermediate, um, just the style of painting that we're doing, but all the techniques that we're using are super beginner friendly. Uh, so we're going to create a sketch layer of our photo and then we're going to move the photo over to the corner and that's what we're going to use to grab color. So you'll see what I mean in just a second. So we're going to start by creating a sketch layer. I'm going to get rid of that link. Okay, so I've got a brand new layer. You can see right here I've got my photo layer is layer one, and then I've created a brand new layer by hitting the plus sign up on your layers palette. And this is my second layer. This is going to be my sketch layer. So I'm going to grab black. So double tap where black is, and you, that'll give you true black. And I'm going to come into the brush set and grab my sketching pencil brush. And I'm going to make this a pretty decent size so we can all see it really well. I'm gonna come up to, let's see what 8% looks like. 8% is good. So if you want to reduce the opacity of your photo so you can see it a little better, you could do that too. I'm gonna to come down to like 70% so we can see it. And on our sketch layer, this top layer right here, we're just going to follow the contours. So this part can be can feel a little tedious, but it's also really fun because we're defining all the areas that we're about to paint. So up here, you can see my branch kind of ended prematurely. So I'm just going to make up the rest of it and have it come off the screen. And then I'm just going to keep following the contour of my branch. And you can decide how many of these flower buds you wanna put in. Um, I like having a nice little cluster here, but down here towards the bottom, I just ended it with this flower right here at the very bottom as kind of my finishing flower. Um, but you can include as many of these little flower buds as you'd like. If you're just getting started with Procreate, it might be easier to just you know, keep it a little simpler and more basic. So this is really, really loose. I'm going to do kind of a loose, messy watercolor style for this. So this does not need to be precise. You can see how fast I'm just drawing these shapes in. So don't worry about this being going in or out of the lines, it's totally fine because this is just our sketch layer. It's not part of our final artwork at all. We're just using this as a guide so it can be really loose and really basic. And at any point in time, if you wanna preview what you've done so far, all you have to do is toggle off the visibility of your source photo. So just hit the little checkbox to uncheck it. And you can see if you missed anything, like I like doing that at the end just to make sure and check everything over to make sure I didn't miss any big important details. So I'm just going pretty quickly here. And I'm also putting the little stems for these flower buds too. We want those details in because we don't want them to appear to be floating when we start painting everything in. I'm going to leave this one off. I'm going to leave that one off. I'm just going to keep the focus right around these larger cherry blossoms because that's 
that's the part everyone's going to pay attention to anyway. So the more we can draw people's focus to them, the better as far as composition goes. So for these main flower blossoms, the photo is a little blurry. So if you need to make up where things are, you know, it's your artwork. Don't be scared to do that. This kind of has a curl up at the top of the petal. So I'm going to include that. This one had a small one. I can kind of dictate that too. And then for the center part of our cherry blossom, we've got kind of this area called the pistil. And then we've got our anther are these little dots up here. So I'm just going to note them by putting little dots on the screen for them. And then the little lines that connect the anther to the center of our flower, those are called filaments. So I'm just, you can reduce your pencil size if it helps. I don't usually put these in just because I already know that I'm, I need to connect them later. But if you wanted to connect them, you could do that too. I'm just gonna leave those as dots because I know I need to connect those to the center later. But you can, you know, leave yourself little mental notes if you want with those lines. So this one right here, this one is showing where this is pretty interesting because we've got a highlight and then a little bit of shadow and then our midtones for that flower in particular, this flower bud. So because we have such a contrast in color right here, normally I would keep all of these just as circles all the way through for the flower buds, but because this one has such a strong highlight right next to a midtone and a shadow, I'm going to make sure I dictate that color shift just by outlining the really strong highlight. And then the rest of this can just follow along because I wanna make sure when I'm painting this in that I capture that strong highlight and it'll just make, it'll add to the realism of the entire piece by doing that. So anywhere where you have like two really, really strong colors that are part of the same element butting up next to each other. We actually had this up here on the branch too. We've got this dark edge and then a highlight. I will dictate that by drawing that line down. So that just, it's nice to have those little notes. When you start painting, it's just less work that you have to do later on. So I've got a little one back here. This one's a little hard to see, but I'm just going to kind of copy what I've already done with the other ones already have an idea of what's going on there. This one looks like there's probably a little bit of a curve or a curl along that petal. And then same thing again, this is good practice. I just make it really sketchy there. And then for all of my anthers, I'm just gonna note that with a bunch of dots. Okay, and then let's see, there's another flower bud right here. This is kind of funky. I'm not really, <laughs> I guess this is part of a stem or something, um, this kind of orange colored thing. But if I don't put something in right here, it's gonna look like this flower is just floating. So you can kind of, you could either make a thicker stem come up. I'm just going to color that one in that orangish brownish color. It'll just look more complete that way. When I first did the practice run through of this, I noticed that this one's just floating if that part isn't included. So I would suggest including that part. Another curl on that petal. This is another one of those situations where we got this really, really bright highlight and then there's a dark edge on the other side. And I'm not going to include this stuff right here, so I'm just going to extend this line and complete it. I know that this is part of my branch right here, so I'm just going to say that's gonna end right there. And we'll draw a few more of those flower buds beneath. All right, so this one, the center of this is really dark. So I'm going to note that with just a circle. And then I've got all this kind of jutting out because it's the top view of the pistol. And then 
we can throw in our anthers again. All right, another flower bud right here with that highlight. And then I'm going to put in these three and then I'll do the last two blossoms. All right, so there's like some extra information going on behind this, but it's distracting and it's not even really well defined to be able to know what exactly that is. So I'm just going to leave that part out and just end it with the stem for this flower bud right here. I think it's just a much cleaner look that way. All right, I think I'm going to include these ones too. I think this is nice that they're right next to this one that's just opening up. All right, so these last two flower blossoms, this one's just opening up. So the, it's got these curved edges, which I definitely want to show up here because they're strong highlights and it will make it look even more believable or realistic that it is opening up. Okay, and then once again, same thing with the center. We've got that really dark area and then it's pretty dense in here. Put in those anthers. Once again, you can feel free to draw the connecting filament lines if you want. I'm just gonna have these float. And then the last blossom, we've got the circle. Hey, Tila, quick question. For anyone yeah. who's joining late, um, just can you mm -hmm. repeat what brush you're using right now? If, if yeah. uh, your brush set, just as sure. a reminder. Yep, this is the sketching pencil brush, part of the watercolor illustration brush set. And we're just creating a sketch layer based on our source photo right now. And the sketch layer is located right above our source photo. Make sure you are not drawing on top of your source photo because that will defeat the purpose of it. So just make sure that that is on its own layer. Thank you so much, Tia. Yep. So this one, if I zoom out, sometimes it's hard to tell what's going on. So I'll zoom out to make sure I'm understanding what's happening um, a little bit better. And I think that there is a curve right here on that petal. And then that's behind there. These are my last anthers. There's extra information right here too that I'm not going to include because it just looks confusing and everything will be much cleaner if I leave that off for this petal. So I'm going to pretend that I've got some extra anthers there. Okay, now we're just going to extend the rest of our branch down. And then this branch has a dark patch right here. So I'm going to include that because I like having that darker shadow in there. And there's also a little bit of a branch right here poking through. So I'm going to leave that. And I think this branch kind of goes like up here and then it comes down. There's like a curve behind these flowers. So if it looks those, if it looks like these flowers are floating too much, I might include just a little peak of the branch in there, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. All right, let's preview our sketch layer by turning off our source photo. And everything looks pretty good. I'm noticing there's quite a bit of empty space right here. Let's see, it's kind of dead space to begin with. We could throw in our own flower bud there if we wanted to. Um, I'm just going to leave it for now and we'll see if it's still bothering me or us later <laughs> and we can, we can make an adjustment. So if you are happy with your sketch layer and you feel like you've got all the information that you need, I'm just kind of looking and making sure I've got the buds and then they're connecting stems everywhere. Do I you want to see my progress and tell me if I did okay? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. It's kind of what you have. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yours is way more detailed. Great. That'll be way easier to follow along. Yeah. 
Okay. Good deal. Yeah. It never hurts to throw in extra information as long as it's not going to confuse you later on, as long as you're aware of where you're at um, on the photo as we work, like the more information, the better. For the sake of time, I'm trying to, you know, move as quick as I can on here. All right, so now that we have this, we're going to increase the opacity of our source photo. If you remember, we reduced the opacity that way we could see it a little bit clear. We could see our sketch layer as we were drawing on top of it. Now we can increase this to full opacity which is really important, make sure you have max opacity. We're going to make a copy of our source photo because I like, I always like keeping the source photo directly behind it. If I ever wanna check for something, like if I realize I left something off in my sketch layer and I really need to line it up later, I like to still have that in the background if I ever need it. So for the smaller version, I'm just going to duplicate our source photo. So slide that layer to the left and choose duplicate. And we can turn off the background one. We don't need that one there anymore. It's just there for us if we do need it later on. So uncheck the bottom source photo. And then the second source photo, we're going to reduce the size of it and put it up in this corner. That way we can grab color from it and then paint off of it. So with the second source photo selected, we're going to select it using our cursor down here, make sure uniform is selected and snapping is turned on. And then you're just going to grab a corner or you can pinch and just put it up here in the corner. You can make it as small as you want. I'm gonna keep mine a little bit larger that way everyone can see it really well on screen and follow along. So I'm just going to have that up in the corner. That way, as I'm painting, I can see exactly what's going on over here without it getting in the way. Um, I could even crop that corner off or erase that corner. That way it's not running into my actual artwork because I don't need any of this information right here. There we go. Okay, so now we can see everything we've got. The first thing we're going to do is drop in our background color. Since we're using a lot of light colors in this, it would be kind of hard to paint it all on white. And I really love the different tonalities that are in this background color. Uh, so we're just going to pull one of those colors as our background. And that way, when we're painting all the lighter colors, they're really going to pop and stand out. So I'm going to grab a color that's kind of right up here. So you wanna hold this little icon that's between your size and your opacity on the left slider. So put your finger right on that little icon and then slide your stylus in that area and just grab one of these grays that you like. I'm gonna grab that one. And now you can see right here, it's in our history. And we're going to come to our background color layer. So tap on background color, and then you can just tap on that color that's in your history and it'll change it to that gray color. So now anything that's lighter colored is really going to show up on top of this, this gray. So now we're back into our layers. We've got our gray background color. Now we're going to start painting, which is the really, really fun part. So we wanna, I'm going to label this layer sketch that way as we add additional layers, we don't get confused about where our sketch layer is. So just tap on the layer thumbnail, hit rename, and you can scribble out the text using your stylus. And I'm just going to label this one sketch and then it'll pop in. It's that. that. <laughs> pretty helpful, right? I'm over here like typing it. <laughs> I know. And when they changed it, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get used to this because it's such a small area. But now I'm like mm -hmm. addicted to it. I, I can rename my layers so much faster now. So <laughs> it was, it took a little getting used to that. I won't lie. And sometimes when I write too fast, it like totally messes it up. And so yeah. I click rename first. What's, yeah, you want to tap on the layer thumbnail, hit rename, and you scribble out layer, whatever it is, and then you just write it. <laughs> Would you look at that? Did you get it? Yeah. Awesome. Sweet. Okay, so we've got our sketch layer up at the top. We're going to create a brand new layer right above it. And this is going to be, this is my favorite layer to paint. Um, we're going to establish all of our petals and then we'll start adding in uh, the, more, <laughs> the more boring details after that, like the stems and the branches. And then we'll do, we'll take care of all of our shadows. And I'm going to, we're going to actually skip highlights because we're going to build in all of our midtones and our shadows um, afterwards. So when we're painting all of this, so hopefully you've got this brand new layer right above your sketch layer, make sure you're on it. We're going to grab our medium paint round brush from the watercolor illustration brush set. So select that one. And now what you wanna do is grab the lightest color on the source photo. So if we look at this flower bud first, 
and it's going to be painted right here. You want to do the same thing we did for color dropping the background color. Hit that little icon on the left and then grab the lightest color over here. And then you want to paint, paint it in. And then we've got that flower bud taken care of. And we'll come back later and add in the shading to it. So it does look like we've got shadow along that edge. And when we do the shading, we're actually going to start smudging things and that will take care of our mid-tone and our shadow at the same time. So it's a, it's a quicker process of working um, when you paint in your highlights first. So I'm going to just continue on, grab the lighter color and then paint that flower bud. So it's Sometimes, okay if we go a little over the lines? Oh yeah, totally. Okay. Um, I do that all the time. Which one did mm -hmm. I grab? If you hold it, sometimes when I get working really fast, um, I won't realize that I'm not touching that little icon fully and it can be a little finicky. So just if you hit it and you think you're hitting it and you think you're grabbing it, you're actually gonna end up painting over here. Mm -hmm. So just remember to finger tap to undo that. If you have any scribbles up here later on, um, we can easily find the layer and erase them and I'll show you how to do that. Um, but just a heads up, I, I start working too fast and then I don't grab the color right away and it can get really frustrating. But if that happens, just make sure your finger is totally covering that little icon. And once again, I'm just grabbing the lightest color on these elements. And if part of the, um, when you paint this in, if it seems too light, there's built-in opacity changes in these brushes to mimic real watercolor. But if you ever have a flower bud where you're like, I wish that was just a little bit denser, after you paint it, just paint over it one more time and that will increase the density of the color. So if you ever feel like it's too light, I like having that extreme variation personally, but if there's ever a flower or a petal or flower bud that you want just a little denser. That's a really quick and easy way to, you know, darken up that color. And when I'm painting these, I'm painting the entire thing in at once. I don't lift up my stylus, like I don't paint a stroke and then come back in again because that's, you're going to get that double density happening. And it's, it mimics um, wet on dry which if you like that effect, some things it's really useful for, but for this, I prefer it just being the one stroke. So just make sure you're keeping your stylus on the screen the entire time you're painting and then lift up. And we're just going back and forth. So I'm, I'm going to talk about this one right here with the high contrast. So we're going to grab the really bright area. And since we've defined exactly where that is, we know we're putting it in the right place. And then we can grab the lighter area and paint the rest of it. And then we'll add in that extra shadow at the end. And if you go over the color, totally fine. This is, in my mind, a messy watercolor look. So actually, sometimes the messier the better. I say that about when my house needs cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> that state of denial. Yeah, it's like, it's fine for another day, I'm sure. And I am just painting um, the petals here. I'm not painting this darker red stem color that's gonna come next. Like some of my shapes are looking suspicious. I'm not sure where <laughs> they came from. <laughs> yeah, that's the tricky part. It's just, yeah, it's kind of like, but you know what? If you turn on the bottom source. Photo, oh, that's true. You can find you. exactly where it is, so. It's another reason I like <laughs> leaving that one on or leaving it there anyway. So this part's really light and that's too light for me. So I'm going to paint over it again, especially because it's kind of in a shaded area where these petals are overlapping it.
Here's another one of those highlight areas. So just making sure that I'm lining up with where it needs to be from the photo. Oh man, you're grooving. Okay. <laughs> I've drawn this like three times preparing for this. So I just noticed I've got a little spot right here and it bugs me, so I wanna get rid of it. And I can just make sure that it is on this layer and not my sketch layer by just unchecking and checking the visibility. And I can tell that it is definitely part of this layer. So that's how you can always tell if you have little smudges elsewhere that you need to get rid of, that's how you can tell which layer it's on. You can just easily uncheck them and check them. So I'm just gonna grab my eraser and erase that. And then make sure I'm back on my same layer, grab my brush and back in business. All right, let's take care of, done enough flower buds. Let's take care of one of these big flower blossoms. So I'm going to grab the color again. So for this one up here, it has a really similar color for all of these petals. You could color drop the petals individually if you want. Um, sometimes for consistency in certain areas like this one that is a very similar color for each petal, I'm going to leave it the same color, but on other petals where the color looks a little different on some of the petals, like this one, this back petal, definitely looks darker than this front petal. So I would change up the color for there. But anywhere where you see where it's pretty similar, for the larger ones, I would keep them the same color. It ends up giving a much cleaner look um, to the final piece. So I've got that color dropped here. So again, it's the lighter color. And I'm just going to go all the way to the center and come all the way out because once we start putting in all the center elements, it'll be it'll look a lot nicer if these petals go all the way to the center. So they're just going to meet and then come around. I do have those couple areas where the edge of the petal started curling up. So like right here and right here, I'm going to leave those ones open because I want that extra highlight from the curl to show up, but the rest of the petal I'll paint in. And you're lifting up your pencil in between each petal, each right? Petal. Yeah, because okay. I like the little overlaps that you get with the petals. Um, um, I just think that looks so pretty and you can tell about their individual petals then. Okay, so I'm going to get the curl area of this one. So I'm going to color drop that little highlight there. And I'm gonna make sure that it's one of the brighter colors. You can see the top color changing. So the bottom color on this color wheel is the one that you currently have. And the top section is the one that you're changing it to. So you can see how it compares to the one you already have. So I'm gonna make sure it's extra white. I'm just paint in this edge. And these are pressure sensitive brushes. So because this center part was thicker than the out, Outside part, I started with little pressure, and then lots of pressure, and then little pressure. And that can give you these really pretty edges that look like petal curls. So I've got this other one that's a little bit larger right here. So I'm going to grab that color. And this one's interrupted by this flower bud. So I'm just going to stop this one short right here and then continue it over here. Okay, and don't worry about any of the center details. We're basically color blocking right now. So we're just getting the main colors for all the elements. We're going to take care of all the inside details later. So just one color for every element right now. And we're just focusing on the flower portions. So I'm going to do this one next. And this one, all of these ones seem pretty consistent. Um, so I think I'm going to paint all these ones the same and then grab a lighter color for this front one that's hanging down. I love this brush. It's so fun, right? It's definitely one of my favorites. I'm definitely doodling with it later. <laughs> Yeah, because that overlap is just so pretty. Yeah, I love it because it mimics the wet on dry so well. And like with traditional watercolor, 
it's just you don't have to wait for anything to dry. You've got it instantly. You get that same effect. We're going to get the edges. And then this front petal right here. Paint that in a little bit lighter. Okay, on to the next one. This one I'm going to keep all the same. And we'll worry about the center detail again for this one later. So just make all of your petals go straight to the center. So when we're doing a petal and if we're highlighting it, do we fill it in with the pink color? No, we just, okay, I see you. You got it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Once you start breaking um, things down into steps, I always really got intimidated by trying to make things look realistic. But then when I started looking at it as like highlight, shadow, midtones, and breaking everything up into layers. It was like this giant light bulb moment for me where I was like, once I start building the color up, especially for watercolor where we, you usually start lighter and then you get darker as you layer on color, it just makes so much sense when you do it digitally. Um, it, it just all comes together so nicely. And it's a lot easier than many people think. And it's cool because you end up with this outcome that looks super complex and no one needs to know how easy it was. <laughs> Those are the best types of projects, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you're the reason I even bought an iPad to begin with, honestly. Aww. I kept seeing all the art you're making and I was like, I'm not stupid when it comes to art. Like I could do that, but I was just <laughs> too nervous to try it. And then I got my iPad and it was so exciting. Aw, mm -hmm. that makes me so happy. I'm like one of those people, like I could never be like an architect because the project would take way too long to make. I'm, I hate saying like I'm an instant gratification type of person because <laughs> when, it comes to to like, <laughs> when it comes to art, I kind of am because I, I want to work quick and efficiently. Mm -hmm. And I get so excited about the next thing that I'm going to do that like if something took me too long to make, then I... I'm already getting too eager for the next thing and then I can't give it my full love and attention as I'm working on it. So I love digital art because it's like I can have an idea, I can sit down and I can actually make something within a couple of hours and then I can move on to the next thing if I want to or tweak the thing I already had. I just love that I can get results so quickly and I'm not stuck with a project that I start getting annoyed by for too long. <laughs> Well, there's so much variety with it too. Like you can do so many different things with the iPad and Procreate. So I'm like, I just always want to be trying out all the different skills and different brushes. And oh you my can't gosh, do too. that as easily in, you know, with the physical things. Yeah. And then it like costs a fortune too. Right. You yeah. Got, <laughs> you got to get all those supplies and then you've got to find like a space to work. Mm hmm. And then you got to clean it all up. Yeah, I don't want to do that part. <laughs> Back to the messy theme. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Are you getting close to? I just checked the time. It's already last. 440. So I'm trying to like. I'm on the last flower I'm that on you're on. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, I. this part is the longest part. So anyone that's like holy crap, how long is this going to take? Um, <laughs> bear with me because everything else goes way faster and then you're going to start seeing everything come to life, which is the really fun part. So if you can get through this part, you'll be good. All right, I just want to so, say the word Gucci and I don't know why. You just want to what? It's Gucci. I don't know why I used to say that in high school. But I just wanted, I said it, so it's out there oh. now. Never yeah. heard someone say that. <laughs> I'm never gonna say it again. So. 
All right, I'm going to turn off the sketch layer so we can preview what we've got so far. Even though we only color blocked, you'll be able to see how cool things start looking. So just turn off your sketch layer. You can already see those petals starting to pop and come to yeah. life, which is really cool. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is tap on your sketch layer, create a brand new layer right above it. This one's going to be all of our stems. So I'm going to work pretty quickly through this part. Um, it's just doing the exact same thing that we already did only most of it's the same color. So you could really use the same color for most of it. I'm just going to grab this dark red color and start painting in these areas. And you can paint this part super messy if you want. We just wanna get this part filled in. So when- This layer is above our pink flowers, right? This layer is below your pink flowers. Oh, okay. So it's right above the sketch layer. Gotcha, gotcha. I like having all the pink of the flowers be at the forefront. So in real life, you would want those to be on top. So that's why we're making sure that the stem is underneath them. It's just highlighting them more. All right, I'm gonna make sure that I'm still on track with the red I'm using. And then this like really funky area right here, this like reddish oranges color. I'm just gonna fill in that block right there. And it's definitely okay if you paint underneath um, parts of the pink. So don't feel like you've got to be like perfectly aligned with where everything is on your sketch layer. All right, I think I've got all mine. I'm gonna toggle off the sketch layer just to see. And if I miss any place and I need to come back to it, I can do that later. We're going to paint in our branch next. So I'm going to turn the sketch layer back on, create a brand new layer above the sketch layer. So tap on the sketch, create a brand new layer. And now we're going to paint the branch. And I'm going to make sure I have these two colors pretty well defined because we drew that separator line down our branch. And this is underneath both layers that we've already made. So it's okay if you want to pass below some of the stems and flowers. I've got one part kind of peeking through right here. And then down here, I've got that really dark area. And then the rest of it. So the other color stays on that same layer, right? I'm on that um, right above the sketch layer, the branch, this is gonna be our branch layer. I'll just label this one branch. But it's okay to have two different tones on that. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Because we're going okay. to, um, we're actually gonna smudge these together. Okay. So it, we'll have to have them on the same. So I'm going to grab this gray and because our background's gray, I wanna make sure that there's enough contrast where it's going to be noticeable that it is a branch. So even though it gets a little darker through here, I'm going to keep it all the lighter color. That way you can really tell that it's a branch. So I'm going to, borrow from some of the lighter colors up at the top of the branch and just bring them all the way down and through. And we can smudge them to, to, to darken, darken them up if we need to. All right, so now let's turn off our sketch layer. And if you wanna smudge some of this color, which is really fun. You just grab your smudge tool, grab your spot bleed brush and the same exact um, watercolor illustration brush set. And I've got mine at a size of like 8% and I will stipple with it and I'll just push from both ends. And the more pressure you put on it, the more intense that smudge will be. So I'll just come back and forth and I'll smudge 
and push the color around and I'll zoom out too to make sure that everything's feeling good. And if it's too intense, I can also reduce the size and smudge a little more gradually. Hmm. This one takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, it can give you some really nice like volume effects where two colors are meeting and coming together. You could also just leave it unsmudged if you wanted to, um, because it is such a hard line. You could go either way. Okay, so now we're going to start throwing in the details of our flowers and this part's pretty cool because we're going to use a stamp brush and you'll get effects immediately. So what we wanna do is turn on our sketch layer and we're going to turn off our petal layer, the one with all the pink on it. We'll just label this one petal. So I'm going to turn off the visibility of that one and create a brand new layer right above it. And now for each one of these blossoms, we're going to grab our soft bloom stamp and the size of this is 24%. I'm going to grab this color, come over to this flower and just stamp it once. And that's too big. This one's pressure sensitive too. So you you might have to play around with the size and the pressure a little bit. And I'm going to stamp in inside each one of these and that's going to give us this really pretty bloom right in the middle. And it's okay if it goes outside the edges, you can either erase that or you can keep it. I like keeping it because it plays up the whole messy watercolor look. Okay. And then we're going to create a brand new layer right above that one. Return back to your medium paint round brush. And we're going to add in the pistol area, which are these darker pink lines, the scribble lines right here. So you can turn off the bloom layer if it's hard to see. And we're just going to scribble that area. And then for these ones where you have like the dark center and then it branches out, I'm going to paint the dark center. For each one of these. And I go back into them and paint the, the pink area. So I'm gonna grab the pink. And for this part, we're just going to draw these little lines pushing out. And if you want, once you have it like this, you can grab your smudge tool and just smudge those colors a little bit too. So they blend a little bit better. Totally optional, you can just leave them painted in if you want. That one's like hot pink. Some of these colors get blown out a little bit with a photo. So if you're getting hot pink too, maybe go yeah. back in and grab a different <laughs> one. And my center right here is looking too light. I probably should have painted over that twice. So you can always go back in and darken it up too with an extra layer of color. All right, anthers, and then we're almost done. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. I've got my medium paint round brush and I'm going to grab, whoops, grab this color right here. It's kind of a light pink and just dot all these. And then we can do some connecting lines with them. So I just switch over to my sketching pencil, so the filament, and I'm going to reduce the size down to like 5%. 
and then you can just connect them down. Let's see what color. I think these ones are a little bit darker color. I'm going to grab like this color right here. And you can just draw these lines down and you don't have to make every one of them come down. You can kind of stop some of them short if it looks like it's going to run into another one, but the eye will make up for it. So we'll just, your eye will naturally draw it in. Okay, so once you have all your lines drawn in, um, we can turn our petal back on and you can kind of get a preview of everything. Sometimes I like changing this layer to multiply because it gives just a, a lot stronger of an effect of this middle part. So I'll just hit the little N and then toggle this up to multiply. And that just makes it a little bit darker and more noticeable. And if we turn off our sketch layer, you can see how everything's really come to life now. And then the last thing that we need to do is just add in that shading because we, we painted everything with the highlights. So now we're going to paint in those shadow areas and smudge them the exact same way that we, we did our branch. So we're just going to create a brand new layer. You can do it right above your petal layer. So tap on petal, create a brand new layer. And this one, we want to turn off no, we can leave that on. We'll leave our petal layer on. Um, that way we can see exactly how we're doing. And you don't really even need your sketch layer anymore for this. You're just going to use your medium paint round brush, grab the color of the shadow area. You're going to paint it along the edge where it needs to go. So I'm going to do these flower buds right here really quick so you can see how this works. And then i get this last one. And then you just grab your smudge tool and you just blend that over. And then you have a mid-tone and then the darkest, densest area is your shadow. And right away, you're going to start making it seem like these are rounded instead of just flat. So I like stippling a lot with the smudge brush for these areas because they're so, the area is so tiny, but it gives a lot of detail to a small part. So, I'm gonna come back. I like doing a few of these at a time and it helps me to work a lot quicker. Let's see. I'm just going to do a few more of these because I know that we're getting short on time here. Um, so I'm going to skip to the petals now so you can see how to add those in for the actual blossoms. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. Grab that color, paint in the area. Some of these are going to look pretty light. Um, so it's up to you if you wanna keep them in or not, but you're going to do the exact same thing. So I just paint a little section of color and then I smudge it out. I'll do one that's a little more obvious here. This one right here, I think will show up a little bit better. So I'm just constantly looking back and forth between the photo and then where I am on my drawing. So this petal right here definitely has some shading on it. So I'm gonna grab one of these darker areas and follow the same kind of shape that these shadows are taking up. This extends all the way down here. And then smudge that out.
All right, I'm just going to finish up this last flower down here and then we're going to add on our watercolor paper texture to make it look like it was a real painting, a real traditional painting. Okay, I'm going to turn off my source photo up in the corner. So just toggle off its visibility. And then I can group all of this together. Oh, I need to turn those center blooms back on. Make sure your sketch layer is still turned off. So now this is the full drawing and turn it on and off. And you can add some paint splatter to it if you would like. My finishing detail that I always love to add at the very top, create a brand new layer, switch your color to black. So double tap where the black is for true black. Come back to the brush set all the way down here. You can um, choose any paper texture you'd like. I'm gonna grab the medium tooth paper at the very bottom. Zoom out of your canvas and then you wanna paint across it in one motion. So don't lift up your stylus. Oops. Don't do what I just did. <laughs> Paint in one stroke. There we go. I think I went too far off the canvas and then it couldn't pick it up again. So you can see that really pretty paper detail now. And I like changing this blend mode to multiply. It just blends everything together a little bit better, in my opinion. So there we go. If you wanted to add in some paint splatters, there are some paint splatter um, brushes in here. I love this rounded splatter. If you do add these, you just want to make sure that you're pulling one of the lighter colors because it'll show up a lot better on this dark background. So I would suggest grabbing like the medium pinks or the, the lighter pinks. They'll just show up much better. So there you go. So that's, that's how to create watercolor cherry blossoms in Procreate based on a source photo. How'd you guys do? Um, very I know good. we kind of like spilled <laughs> it at the end, but I wanted to be, you know, respectful of everybody's time. I, I, I did it. Really? You yeah. spilled it. We did it. I did. Oh, wow. There's a lot of my um, dark red towards the bottom, but that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is super, super cool. Um, and um, thank you both, Michelle and Riley, for, for sharing your work as well. Um, we're going to make some time for, for Q&A. So, you know, there is a little bit of time left here. Um, for those, I see some already some great questions in the chat. But for everyone who's still with us, what I would love is, you know, if you have a question and you haven't sent it yet, please put it in the chat. Tila, before we jump into questions and then talk a bit more about the work, can you share a little bit just about your watercolor, fl uh, watercolor florals and Procreate class? Um, just sure. so we have kind of context. Yeah, so if you enjoyed this process of painting digital watercolor, I have an entire class that walks you through from very beginner, we start out with creating some very basic doodles, talking about common petal shapes and leaf shapes. We have a bunch of warm up exercises, and then we move through the class throughout 10 different projects, and they increase in complexity as you go through the course. So it, even if you're a complete beginner with Procreate, just follow them in order, and by the end, you'll have a whole toolbox of advanced skills um, to add to your own arsenal and all of your future projects. Projects. We talk about creating realistic florals kind of like this. How did you create your own custom bouquets and experiment with different flower types? And we even dive into seamless patterns and vectorizing if you want to expand your offerings. If you sell things on Etsy maybe and you need them multi-purpose, um, vectorization is a really, really handy skill set to have. So we walk through all of that um, throughout 10 different projects. And my understanding is you're also giving $20 off for the next seven days for folks who attended the workshop. So thank you. Like, that's pretty awesome. Well, thanks to everyone. I really appreciate you spending an afternoon with all of us and painting together. So uh, I just really wanted to say thank you. And then I appreciated your time so much for being here with me today. Cool. Well, let's hop into some of these questions. You know, uh, let me grab some of these from the chat. And, and for just to actually, before I get to the questions, the link to Tila's course, I just posted it in the comments. It's also in the YouTube description. And if you're watching this as a replay, you know, don't worry, we're gonna send it out via the email too. So it's say, and I'll try to include actually the links to the two things you referenced today uh, in the follow-up email. That way, anyone who's watching this in the replay also will get the reference photos and the link to your brush set. Sounds great. Uh, cool. So with that, I do wanna grab, uh, while, while we jump into the questions, one of the questions which I'll bring up right here is a screenshot of your layers at the end. Uh, yeah, so 
So I just brought these up, so hopefully that helps answer a few questions. We've got the main source photo, the little mini source photo that was up at the top. We've mm -hmm. got uh, a sketch layer, the branch layer. The layer above the branch is the stem layer. Sorry, I didn't label these all. I was trying to move along with time. Normally, I'm like such a stickler for labeling layers, so I apologize that not all of these are labeled. Then we've got our petal. The one above the petal are all the shadows that we apply to it. I saw a question, why didn't I use a clipping mask? When you clipping mask into something that's already textured, you reduce um, the visibility of that extra texture that's on top of it, and it just doesn't show up as well. And you can also get the messy look not using a clipping mask. So it's really intentional why I didn't use a clipping mask for that. So I wanted to make sure um, I mentioned that. Uh, this one is the bloom. So layer seven, layer seven is the bloom. Um, and then layer eight is the main pistol area. So the darker areas um, that were more drawn in, not just the stamp. And then layer nine are all the, the filament and the anther. And then layer 13 was my splatter. And then layer 12 was the paper texture up at the top. So hopefully that helps answer any questions. Thank you for the in-depth. I, I mean, that, I, I think that was very helpful. What, so one question I do want to bring up, and when I bring these questions up, I'm sorry, I think they're covering Riley. I apologize. I'm just popping them on the screen. Um, the question I wanted to bring up is, I know you covered it at the beginning, but your background, right? Like you, you're, you're leading this workshop today. Can you just speak a bit? Do you, you know, do you, like what's your education? Like what, what brought you to this moment again? Sure. So uh, I have a degree, a uh, graphic design degree, a four-year graphic design degree. I graduated in 2008. I'm starting to feel old now. Um, I graduated from 2008 from the Savannah College of Art and Design. I worked as a graphic designer for a bunch of different places as an in-house um, designer, and then I worked in a studio. And then I started creating all of my tutorials because I knew that some of my tips were helping my studio um, coworkers, and they suggested that I put them online and me being an introvert and terrified, I resisted. And then my husband bought me this <laughs> USB mic for Christmas one year. And then I felt like I had to do it because he spent the money on it, you know? So I posted my first YouTube tutorial in January of 2014. And everyone was so nice that I just started creating more and more. And then it ended up being a weekly thing. So that's how I got to every Tuesday. And over time, I specialized in Adobe Illustrator, actually, as a graphic designer professionally. Um, but then, but I also love Photoshop. I just, my skill set was more heavily involved in Illustrator just with my day-to-day -day work. Um, but I always loved Photoshop. And then when Procreate came out, I was like, holy cow, because I love lettering. It's always been a hobby of mine. I, I have a font making course, so I teach font making. So I love lettering and Procreate really let me expand with lettering. And then I got into illustration and Procreate has just been so incredible being able to experiment with different mediums without having to buy anything. I know I'm talking super fast, but hopefully all of that makes sense. Um, so now I'm just like obviously obsessed with flowers and botanical and um, they just give me so much joy in playing around with different textures. And knowing Photoshop, I can tweak the settings with brushes because I was already familiar with creating custom Photoshop brushes and it's pretty similar. Procreate's way better for brush making, but I was already really familiar with brush making in Photoshop. So then I got really, um, really into creating brushes and procreate and experimenting with all the different textures I could integrate into work. So now I'm doing illustration more than actual design and lettering, but I still have like, they, they are, a, they take up a huge place in my heart, both of those still. I, I actually didn't know the story. Yeah, no, I, I didn't know the story. So that was, I, even though I worked with you before, like, that's yeah. awesome. But thank you for sharing that. Um, quick question uh, about the replay links again. I'm just going to bring that up and I'll answer it. Uh, for the for anyone who came halfway through, so if you're watching this on YouTube, which is I think the only place it's broadcasting right now, this link is actually the, one of the replay links. It'll be available here on the uh, Discover channel. Which you know, if you enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe. Uh, this will also be available on the same page you registered for this workshop. So, and, and if for whatever reason you somehow lose all of those links, I'm going to email it out again. So don't worry. There's a third option. It's going to go out. But you should be able to watch it in a bunch of different ways. And I highly recommend for anyone who, you know, said at any point things were going too fast, you can rewatch it in YouTube. You can actually slow down the speed. That's something I've done in the past when, when watching one of these kind of paint-alongs. So use it. Use that function. Uh, Tila, if you don't mind, I mean, I have I have another minute. We could take one more question because I did see one more. Of course. Cool. Um, grabbing this one right here. So... 
any are you going to be teaching any actual watercolor classes beyond procreate have you had any, any <laughs> live watercolor classes in so the future? Funny. Well, before Procreate came out, I loved painting it with traditional watercolor. So I actually have some past courses that I've already made. Um, I don't have any immediate plans to create a traditional watercolor right now, but I have some past ones. I have a watercolor florals for graph design course, which teaches you how to paint watercolor florals traditionally and then scan them into the computer and then um, edit them in Photoshop and sell them. So that's one of my courses. And then I've got some texture courses too, but that's the main painting one that I have. Very cool. Well, so back to the digital realm, I'm going to grab one more question because I, sure. I, I'm curious. Are you doing any new Procreate courses beyond what you already have available like in your teachable school? Like what are you cooking? Oh man, <laughs> I haven't announced this anywhere yet. I am right in the middle of recording a brand new class right now. It's going to launch next month. It's going to be called Gouache Botanicals and Procreate. Ooh, and it is so, it's some of the, oh my gosh, you guys, it's some of the best artwork I've ever, ever made. I'm so, I'm like beyond excited about it. Wow. So. For those who stuck around to the end, you just got the exclusive. What a, I, we all stuck around just for that drop. Oh man, you guys, I'm so, <laughs> so yeah. excited I'll tell you what, it. when it's ready, we'd love to have you back. Obviously. I would love to come back. We can back. talk all about it. Yeah. Well, folks, we are at time. Uh, again, before we leave, one last thing. Everyone who stayed with us, you know, please let us know in the comments. That Let's let Tila know we appreciate her. Let's thank Riley and Michelle as well. Let's thank all three of them for joining us today and, and you know, doing this live on stage for free. We, we, we appreciate you doing this. Um, Tila, while we let folks, you know, let them know how much they appreciate y'all, any last words, any last things you want to share with your audience? Because some of these folks are with you every Tuesday. Sure, yeah. <laughs> so... Every Tuesday, I post about the latest tutorial on my Instagram. My handle's every Tuesday. Um, and you can find more about me and all the courses I offer and past tutorials over on my website. It's every-tuesday.com. So you know where to find me. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you, everyone. We're going to sign off in just a second. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. If you enjoyed the channel, please subscribe. Uh, we're going to hopefully have Tila back to talk about her new class. Uh, with that, we're going to sign off. Let's everyone say goodbye. And we'll, we'll say goodbye here. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much.